Right guys, um, what we've done now with our little transformer here is um, the primary and outer secondary are now hooked in series so we're using the whole lot as one single primary and of course we have our internal secondary so what we're going to do with this test is go through everything um, including resistor measurements that we're going to do now so we can see our um, CVR on the input is 10.3 CVR on the output is also 10.3 and our load resistor is Ninety-eight point four to ninety-eight point five. So um, now that we know all those values, we can carry on with testing. So it's about as accurate as, as I can measure those. I'm just going to take you off the tripod here, which is a bit of a manual operation because I've lost the clip. Okay, so um, it's written all our resistor values on here, as you can see. Um, I'll do a course now, I have to put our load resistor back into the chalky block, one handed, like so, and find my little screwdriver. Just doing it this way so you don't you see you know that um, nothing has changed between camera shots. Um, we'll get our signal generator on. I have been running a heap of tests and um, on different frequencies, different uh, power inputs, and so far this is the uh, most efficient that I have found. And so we'll run through the test now and I will show you how I've been doing my measurements this time now that we've got that little error removed which means we will not be including the power dissipated um, or consumed by our um, input CVR we'll just be leaving that out and simply using that to gather the current and to calculate our voltage across our input or our primary coil due to the fact that we have all our common grounds okay so um, in this test here we're running at 20 kilohertz 20 volts peak to peak um, and when I find my pen we can write all those measurements down so our voltage over R1 um, is 376 millivolts and our voltage across R1 and the primary coil now is 4.72 volts so our voltage across our primary will be our 4.72 minus the voltage drop across our resistor which is 376 millivolts RMS. Um, so those two measurements give us enough information to calculate the uh, power um, that the primary is um, consuming. Okay, so our secondary now is a little easier. Um, and we'll 
keep it the same way around so um, our red channel or yellow channel is still reading the voltage across the load and our blue channel will still be reading the current so we've hooked it up like this this time so we can read the voltage across our CBR and the red channel there is reading the voltage across our load uh, the 98.4 ohm resistor um, because we have it hooked up like this it will of course be 180 degrees out of phase um, I could invert one of the channels but uh, we'll leave it like that so we get a nice clear picture and um, we can now calculate our power being dissipated from each resistor um, simply by knowing the voltage across that um, value resistor so voltage over R2 which is our CBR in the output is 360 millivolts RMS and the voltage over R3 which is our load resistor is 3.6 volts RMS um, and of course this resistor is 10.3 ohms and this one is our 98.4 ohms so we now have enough to calculate our power in and power out um, which we will go and do now with our online calculator and we can come back and see what we have so um, we'll go and do that and we'll be right back Okay, so back to our test results, um, we had 376 millivolts RMS across R1, um, which of course is our 10.3 ohm resistor, um, that gives us a current of 36.5 milliamps. So just uh, for curiosity's sake, I plugged in my multimeter, um, which is set on the milliamp scale, uh, and AC to see how close it was and it's reading 37.3 milliamps so it's 0.7 of a milliamp off of what our scope is saying um, and the accuracy is uh, plus minus um, 5% up to 10 kilohertz and we're running at 20 kilohertz so even at 20 kilohertz the old uh, digital multimeter is not doing too bad at all Alright, so we're just going to run through what we've done here once again. Um, here we have our CBR on the input, um, our primary coil. Um, channel 1 was across the CBR and the coil. Channel 2 was across the CBR. So we've subtracted the voltage that was across the CBR to gain our voltage across the coil. Um, which we have done here and on our output we have the ground of our scope here um, channel 2 is here measuring the current across our CBR but once we know the uh, once we have a known voltage across a known resistance we can calculate the dissipated power and channel 1 um, also um, you'll see in the video sorry my mistake in the video the grounds are actually here and the probe on channel 2 is here and the probe on channel 1 is here so measuring across each resistor independently so we have a known voltage across this resistor and a known resistor value and the same on R3 a known voltage and a known resistor value so we can calculate dissipated power across both of those resistors so um, here are the results from the test we just did um, of course 376 millivolts we had across R1 which is um, 10.3 ohms which gives us 36.5 milliamps of current um, the voltage across our primary is 4.72 volts minus the voltage drop across R1 which is 376 millivolts 
that gave us a voltage of 4.344 volts RMS across our primary coil. So our power in is 4.344 volts RMS times 36.5 milliamps and that gives us 158.556 milliwatts. Um, the output, as, as I show, um, is a little easier. We have a NARM voltage across a NARM resistance of 360 millivolts across R2 which is 10.3 ohms that, uh, as we have here and we had 3.6 volts RMS across R3 which was 98.4 ohms I lifted it up to the 4 um, so our power out um, across R2 we're dissipating 34.95 milliwatts and across R3 we're dissipating 131.841 milliwatts so the total power out is 166.791 milliwatts and our power in is 158.556 milliwatts so um, we divide our power out by our power in times that by 100 and we end up with 105.193 percent efficiency um, yeah, that's what we've ended up with from the numbers off the scope uh, which was reading very clean waveforms as you can see uh, and in this test unlike the other one we have discarded the dissipated power of our one and have not added it on to our output power because if we had it done that we would have also had to add on the very same amount onto the input power so as uh, my high stated, we might as well just disregard it altogether and use it nothing. Um, use it for only um, gathering the information to give us our current input. I think you would agree that the coil is pretty messy, the windings, and the core is not the prettiest either. Um, we could do a lot better and a lot neater job than that which I believe would bring the efficiency up even further um, also I have tested uh, various frequencies and power inputs with various results that one had uh, an efficiency of 73.447% at 20 volts peak to peak 40 kilohertz so we went backwards up in the high frequency range um, this one here, 16 volts peak to peak, 20 kilohertz. So um, we had 104.37 milliwatts of input power and only 92.882 milliwatts of output power. So once again, not very efficient there. This one here, 20 volts peak to peak, 20 kilohertz. Um, this might look really good. Only I screwed up. Uh, where was it? Actually, I'm not sure what I did on that one. I'll have to run through that one again. Uh, this one here, 137.465% efficient. This is the one that I screwed up on. Um, this, uh, we're at 212 millivolts across our um, VR1, should have been 312. So that's a bogus measurement, no good. Uh, we had 121.11% efficiency there. Um, this test I actually carried out um, using both my multimeter and the scope, averaged the um, two outcomes, and that's what we end up with. This one here, 10 volts peak to peak at 2 kilohertz, we only had 98.74% efficiency. Um, and so it goes on but um, I ran this test just now as you know and they are the numbers that we were given from our scope across our uh, known resistances and um, that is what we ended up with as far as efficiency goes so uh, I think I might um, keep on going with this and um, make myself another call and do some nice neat windings 
and um, a single coil instead of two joined ones and see how we go anyway uh, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video